Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is Saturday, 3rd of July, 2021. Welcome to Hindsight, episode 18, where we learn to be a better trader. We're going to take a look in hindsight as the trades that I've taken all of last week, because I haven't made a video in a while. So we're going to look through from Monday to Friday, the stocks that I've traded and the lessons to be learned from that. Uh, whether it's a loss or a win, either way, there's always a lesson to be learned. So I hope you guys learn something. We're going to start off with HYD. I believe this was on Monday, no, Tuesday, 28th of June. So the news announcement, let's start off with that. We've got an FDA approval for upgraded battery. Now, two things immediately I can tell from this announcement without even opening it, right? I don't think I even recall opening this announcement. Two things. One, FDA approval. That means there's going to be liquidity, almost guaranteed. Secondly, upgraded battery. That tells me that they've already had a battery, most likely already FDA approved. So this doesn't sound that significant. So let's go to HYD. Now I've got a video called, I think it was some sort of stock tip video. I think it was episode 10. And that was uh, on this particular chart setup. It's called uh, predicting opening price action. And what it is, is this setup here where on the daily chart, it's just selling, 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 and selling constantly. Nothing but a massive downtrend. All of a sudden we have a catalyst news announcement. So let's open up the one minute chart. And the first thing I said when I saw that chart in Discord was I am not touching the match for this one. And you can see exactly why, because it's going to gap up and sell off 99 times out of 100. This is how this setup works every single time. Unless it really is a monster announcement where it's going to end up green for the day. And let me tell you, when there's, when there's a monster announcement, you know it's a monster announcement, right? There's no doubting whatsoever that it's going to be a massive green candle but in this case this was just like an okay news announcement it was like fda and whatever an upgraded battery don't care so avoided the match now i don't recall where but i did manage to scalp a tick because the liquidity was so good uh but i didn't feel too comfortable trading it around this 27 28 level there was just so much reload selling on high uh, on high volumes you can see the volumes here and it barely moves a tick so the trade i ended up taking was a little bit later in the day at around 11.30, and you can see it's got higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, and higher lows. That's all it keeps doing is higher lows, higher lows. And so that's where I took the trade here, despite the fact that it was hanging around VWAP. That didn't bother me at all. What I was after was a retest of the highs. And again, same situation, high volumes, and it's barely moving a tick. So I was happy to get out for, I think it was three ticks, so 20, 26 or 26 and a half. I think it was one of each, and then selling out at 28 and a half. So I was really happy with that. Um, the whole setup was as I wanted it to be. And, you know, there was a nice volume taper off uh, around this area here. So it felt very safe to come in because these volumes that entered at the highs weren't pushing the stock down. So low volume grind, grind, grind. Good, look, good looking setup for me. I was happy to take it uh, for, I think it was about a, a two tick risk for about a what was that a four or five tick reward so happy with that and yeah so every, everything lined up perfectly i think in this case uh the news announcement everything i knew about micro caps with fdas and just the daily chart setup everything looked really good everything lined up traded it arguably perfectly from my perspective i don't think i could have traded the morning better but then that's where i fucked up uh and that's in the afternoon really and that was looking for a horizontal retest don't i, I don't know why i'm taking this shit Honestly, um, I think it was the liquidity I saw that uh, came around here. I, I took it just after this volume here and I was like, right, there's actually a high volume hold at 24. Um, but the problem is ever since around 1230, when the liquidity sort of died off, uh, there was a huge bot coming in and manipulating the order book. So what it first did was it would stack a line, let's say for example, here at 25. It would stack it with about a million and 1.4 million shares or something like that. And then it would wait for liquidity to stack on at the same line, right? So at 24 cents, it, there was bidders stepping up there as well. And then what the bot would do was cancel its order and then sell into 24. So whether that was other liquidity coming in, whether it was, you know someone else was selling or whether it was the, the bot that was doing that, it was hard to actually, you know, it's, it's really difficult to pinpoint who's doing what. Uh, whether the bot just happened to pull in time but here's the thing right the bot was first in queue and this is why i suspect it was the bot or the person in charge of the algorithm that was actually doing the selling because it was first in queue and you can't pull an order when you're first in queue right if someone sells into you you're gonna take the hit 
if you're a bot first in queue. And this is what makes this particular bot dangerous. Now I did a video on this a month or two ago and it's, it's quite prevalent because the old school bots would sit in the bid with like 2 million shares and it looks super obvious. There'd be a huge buffer, there'd be thousands of orders between the bot and the current price and it'd have plenty of time to just bail out and exit. But this is a new era of bot manipulation and it's very powerful. So instead of selling out, uh, ended up buying in, falling for this little bit of volume here, bit of churn. The bot action came back in and it pushed, actually the best example of this bot pushing the price is up here. If you got Spark for the replay, look between about 2.30 to 3 o'clock. The bot did so much to push the stock from 22, 22 cents to 24 cents. And what it did was the exact same thing. It was jumping, jumping, jumping. It would line wipe one line for maybe 50,000 shares and then stack 1.8 million, 1.857 or something like that. So it would look like legitimate liquidity. And that's why no one was selling into it because everyone was expecting buy pressure. And some people fell for that buy pressure and I knew it was there, but I'm thinking I can actually get away with this being pushed to VWAP or something like that. A little bit naive in my thinking, so I did end up selling out for a loss there. So everything was good. And then you see what happens on a downswing. I talk about this every now and then is I, I tend to not buy things on a downswing, but I was convinced based on volumes that, hey, this could be the bottom. And really, I should have waited for the upswing, uh, not trying to pick the bottom. And then you, you see what happens when trying to pick the bottom. Uh, I fell for it. It happened. It wasn't a good trade. Moving on to LSA, this setup looked really good. Uh, bought at VWAP, got, uh, I think it was two ticks down for this one. Terrible. Unfortunate. What are you going to do? Risk management was there. And ultimately, it did end up swinging back to the upside nicely. And then, of course, they end up, uh, this was a setup on, I, I believe, the 15 minute chart. It looked best. Or oh, it might have been the 5 or 15. So you can see it was like a little pump flag i was expecting a breakout to the upside here of course that didn't work out um but rather sell it off than hope you know cross your fingers and hope that in the next day or two that it'll rally so really the the entry here was um back here at 5.4 i guess that's when the volumes kicked back in and pushed it to the upside but really i mean it is what it is it wasn't the best setup in the first place uh auh oh god this is a fucking boredom trade again this is just terrible um Again, falling for volumes, uh, 1.4. I took a small size at 1.4, uh, and I, I'd say about 15% of my parcel was 1.4, and the rest was here at 1.3. Uh, volumes came in, it looked like it was reloading pretty heavy. Heavy reloads, heavy reloads, heavy reloads. And I've only ever once in my life been stuck in a stock that's actually gone just straight down without a bounce. Right, so ended up taking the tick. Instead of waiting for it to swing back to the upside, smoking the hopium and hoping that it goes back up and maybe take it in profit. Uh, I mean, I've been stuck once in a stock that's just gone blur and just like gone sideways at the lows. So I, I took a massive hit um, doing that in the past. I mean, this was ages ago, but look, you only have to ha have that happen once in order to learn your lesson. So that's that really. Um, terrible trade again. Uh, I should know better, but I think boredom got the best of me along with volumes. So this, again, this just comes down to not buying something that's going down. Uh, I, I should know better. I do know better. Still took the trade. <laughs> hey guys, I'm human. YOJ, this was, uh, I don't actually recall if this was a news announcement or not. I just remember taking this trade and was really happy with it. It was a, a swing back to the upside, helping it push above 20.5, taking it at 21 and uh, 21 and a half, I believe it was. Or 21.25, I might have been a cross trade. I, I do recall bailing out on this twice, so that might have been like here. So that that was a nice little trade. It was short, it was quick. Um, I don't recall the reason for it actually. I think it might have been in public Discord. Someone pointed out YOJ, and I was actually pretty ha happy with the setup, um, the way it was grinding above VWAP, and then volumes came in and pushed it again. So you see, I'm not buying it on the downswing here, I'm buying it on the uptick where volumes come in. So just watching, 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 and hitting. Uh, hitting the offer, lifting the offer as volumes come in. Uh, NXL, now this was uh, an interesting announcement. Um, it sounded bad from memory, so I shorted it. And really what was what the, uh, the thought process here was uh, cracking the opening price, the, the, the range of the first candle, uh, closing it out, it failed. And that's all she wrote really, just kept it really tight. So it, it broke down. 
it recovered straight away hit out as quick as possible because uh once it breaks this opening range uh, it should retest at the worst and then swing back down and that's the idea so when it doesn't do that it's like okay close it out you don't really know at that point if it's going to go up or if it's going to retest the opening range and then come back down so i wasn't going to take a long position uh, I I probably should have paid attention and waited for the break because that's exactly what happened was it ended up breaking the opening range then retesting and then rallying uh, I think my eyes were averted to another trade so I missed out on that one and it looked pretty uninteresting based on volumes as well and as you can see volumes came in later as well so kind of lost interest in it uh Kogan this one if I bring up the daily chart you can see that this was just this was just rallying, rallying, rallying on the back of COVID news. Of course, COVID kicked in, lockdowns came in. So online stores did really well. I think JB Hi-Fi and Templin Webster did well as well. So you can see that for a few days, it just went on a, on a rally on the back of lockdown. So if we bring up the one minute chart, I missed out on Kogan uh, on, the initial, on the initial drive down. I wasn't expecting Kogan to be in play. I guess I just... I don't know. I, I didn't think it would really sell off, but hey, here we are. It did end up selling off. I did catch um, the move around VWAP twice and ended up scaling out as it looked like it was getting weaker and weaker to the downside. Again, it, here it failed to really push into new lows territory, so I thought it, a swing to VWAP was coming. So uh, as you can see, that candle as well was high volume. It was looking like it's going to swing back to VWAP multiple times so I got out in anticipation here because it didn't it failed to make new lows here basically so I was happy to scale out and I guess there was an opportunity here but really this is like towards end of day wasn't expecting too much liquidity and volatility to come in to push it further but ultimately I was happy with that trade um, in hindsight I think I did everything correctly in terms of uh, scaling out um, it failed it failed to really push into new lows uh, it, it dipped down came back up I was willing to give it one more shot uh, dip down fails to crack i mean look it did make a new low but just barely by a tick so i was like right get the fuck out of there i was happy with that trade ultimately sya i have no idea what caused this announcement i don't even know if this was a catalyst i think it might have been uh but i wasn't paying attention okay so it was a catalyst news event uh someone pointed it out to me in in, in private discord so i was uh i was happy to take the upswing really what this was was just following the momentum right it was just an upswing i was like right okay it's coming up catch sort of i wouldn't call that a retest of anything in particular um i was eyeing off where the volumes were at most so it was like a like a volume break into a retest of that level at 8.8 .8, which i believe was the opening price yeah opening price of 8.8 .8. so that was my decision making there of uh, getting in at 8.8 .8. and look if it was going to fail at 8.7 I'd, I'd try and bail out at 8.7 maybe take some out at 8.6 uh, ended up getting out at 9.1 now the reason here is because it just didn't fucking do anything it just kept going sideways i think there was a bit of order book manipulation actually yes i did sorry i did end up tweeting about this one about sya um i was talking about the order book order book manipulation from around 8.9 and 9.0 and it managed to push it about two ticks and straight away if you look at the order book replay for sya you're going to see the exact same thing for hyd and that's why I said, I'm going to get the fuck out of here because the order book manipulation is there. High volumes have come in. The same dodgy 1.875 million shares came in. I think it was a 1.57. Uh, either one, uh, there was a order book manipulation coming in and it was obvious. Like it just like fucking stood out like a massive red flag. But I was willing to give it the extra tick because no one was selling into it and buyers were still stepping up. They're falling for this garbage again. And it's like, right, I learned my lesson on HYD. Like, I, I know these bots exist. I know what to look for. And they're super fucking obvious because they, these bots don't lift the offer much. They'll take like 50,000 shares and queue up with 1.8 million, right? They have no intention of getting filled. What they, what they do is they arrive when there's low liquidity. Look at this liquidity. Of course, they're going to pop up now. They're not going to pop up in the morning where they have a chance of actually getting sold into. These high volume spoofs, they come in in the afternoons or whenever liquidity is dead. So I spotted it, was really happy that I learned my lesson from HYD. Uh, it took a few ticks, so every tick really mattered on this stock, so it was good. Um, I did notice that this was shortable, but it was a little bit too late. It was around 8.7 and I was like, I don't want to take the short of 8.7. 
Uh, it turned out it wouldn't wouldn't have been too bad, but the setup wasn't there. What I ideally should have done was sold into uh, 9.0 into that spoof, that obvious spoof. And uh, I, I actually didn't think that shorts were available. So I have this habit lately of just not checking if there's shorts. I'm, I'm like, right, it's a micro cap stock. Why would there be shorts? You know, Invast actually has shorts for these fucking stocks a lot of the time. So i got to pay more attention. Um, PAR was setting up really good. I think it was on the 15-minute chart that it looked best. Uh, so it was really on a nice tear, real big rally, and it broke out to the upside. And this is sort of what I was trading was uh, this break into new highs. And I, I got, what, a couple of ticks out of that? Um, not too impressed about it. I guess the overall momentum uh, was sort of finished the volumes kind of exhausted uh, after this big push to the upside so i managed to ca catch a couple of ticks it was okay it was something uh the setup was there but it certainly wasn't a plus i mean you can see just how much has rallied and on what volumes so it would have been a, a pretty weak push and i guess i was right weak push could have got a few more ticks out of it but ultimately i, I was just playing safe uh inf uh, this one was terrible, 9.0, 9.1. Volumes kicked in. I thought it looked really good, and then I had no choice but to hit out uh, from 8.9 to 8.8, .8, I believe it was, uh, and maybe even 8.7. Uh, ultimately, it was just, yeah, it was just shit. A liquid stock. This is the one-minute chart. And even though the volumes came in, there was just no follow-through, and I really should have just paid attention to the fact that, hey, it's done that a few times before. Um, but... It is what it is. It actually ended up looking like a really good trade. So I think on the, again, I think it was the 15 minute chart. The setup looked good. Okay, no, it wasn't this stock. But I was looking for a breakout of some sort here. This is, yeah, this is the breakout that I was looking out for. This level here, you can see it's got about four data points. One, two, three, four. Uh, I was looking for the break. Ended up coming <laughs> the following day. And of course, it was a nice break too. So uh, di didn't catch on that one. I was too busy trading other things, but the idea was there um but got stopped out and it is what it is like there's just no volume follow through uh probably should have kept paying attention to it because you can see that really nice momentum to the upside uh we've got llc gap down uh we were talking about this on discord i went through the financials and i actually thought it wasn't too bad so if i bring up the daily chart at the same time i didn't want to get influenced by what what I knew of the stock at the same time. So it's like, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't in terms of looking at the fundamentals. So what we have is a big, big, big sell-off for LLC. Uh, they're sitting at negative 335 mil for the financial year. And that was through the um, through the pandemic, basically. So they lost 330 mil. And they ended up positive 300 mil or something like that. I think the recovery wasn't as good. Uh, the numbers weren't as good as they were meant to be at this kind of range. I think there was an anticipation. I actually don't really know what the anticipated numbers were, but ultimately it sounded good, right? From negative 300 to about positive. I think it was 300. I don't actually recall the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I do recall thinking that this actually didn't sound bad fundamentally. Uh, I was kind of surprised by the gap down, but I still shorted it because, well, I'm going to short the price action. That's what matters to me. Um, doesn't matter what I think about the stock. Doesn't matter if I think it's worth two times what it is. It's it's all about the price action and momentum. But that that plan, that idea, that thinking, uh, probably I should have paid more attention to it, perhaps because I was I was actually kind of, I guess, if I'm left surprised by a gap down when I'm thinking that it should be positive news, based on the financials, based on the fundamentals. Like, I don't really trade financials that much, right? These quarterly updates, these company updates. I don't trade them often enough or for long enough, right? Obviously, I trade these massive gap up and downs, but I haven't been doing it for long enough to really be comfortable in saying, hey, I'm going to fade this to the upside, right? So when it's, when, it's, when it's dropping down, I'm just going to keep adding long, long, long. It's like I'm still not comfortable quite doing that. Um, I've probably done it twice with some serious conviction before, but I didn't have that level of conviction for LLC. I wasn't familiar with the stock. I'm not familiar with retail, uh, sorry, with um, real estate. And yeah, so the idea and the thinking was there. I guess I should pay more attention to that in the future, like because it did stand out. The numbers did stand out and that, that surprise factor was there. So I guess scalping the match is probably the right thing to do and then wait for the setup and then go for that gap fill because the the thinking was there the fu the fundamentals sounded right to me 
for a gap fill. So what we have is um, shorting the match because the book was ugly and then shorting the breakdown here, you know, the opening candle breaking down and then just straight away closing it as quickly as possible uh, for a couple of ticks there. Uh, that's, that's the only thing I could have done really. Um, so shorting the opening candle when it breaks below the opening candle, shorting it is the only thing to do or anticipating that it breaks down there as well. So I think that was correct and I'm happy with that decision making. I think that's correct every day of the week. Uh, and closing it out as soon as possible when it fails to break you can see it, it wicks down by what was it? 10 ticks it wicks down 10 ticks and instantly recovers and it's like just fucking hit out just close it straight away no thinking it's not like oh this should have been you know i should have sold down more no no just just close the fucking thing and that's it it's not going to be a long because you know i i can't tell if it's going to retest this level here and then go back down um and as you can see it does end up it does end up cracking this horizontal here as well so it ends up faking to the upside by a few ticks and then coming back down. So it was a bit of a, a bit of a mess for this stock. So I didn't actually end up trading it for the rest of the day. I probably should have on this break here. Uh, once the opening volatility was over, I I had my attention elsewhere, and I guess I was a little bit frustrated with the stock and the way it was trading. So uh, that every day of the week is the correct decision to go long is the break of this range and didn't take it. Uh, and gap fill was, is not necessarily the ultimate target, but getting close to gap fill is, especially when it does this kind of range, this broad range where it just wicks about and then goes right, boom, and then pops above it. So every day of the week, that's that's the correct decision. But um, ultimately, it came down to me missing it. I, I just, I think I, I didn't even have the chart open for some reason, because I definitely every day of the week would take this trade here when it breaks out above the opening range, the opening volatility range. So missed opportunity there. Uh, not sure what I could have done better. I guess just had the fucking chart open. I don't even know why I closed it. Probably closed it in frustration. SUD, this probably looks a little bit better on the three minute chart. Basically the idea is uh, that it was breaking out. I believe it was this trend line here. Yeah, so it was breaking out and I was happy to ride the momentum. I, I paid the price. I, I didn't wait for the pullback. FOMO got the better of me because I was late to the party and watching this one. So as it broke out, I, I noticed it. And yeah, ended up paying 6.6 .6 for this one. And then, you know, there's always a retest. You know, when a range is broken or a, a level is broken, there's going to be a pop retest. 90% of the time, there's a retest. So I should have known a little bit better. I should have been a bit more patient. Uh, and that's something that I've been trying to do more often is just be more patient. So 6.6, um, 6.4 and ended up getting out at 6.9. I was queued up at 7.2 and 7.1, I believe, but I just wasn't getting there. The price action just wasn't getting there. And the book looked really fucking bad, by the way. Like, it was really bad for the bids. Uh, so I was, like, happy to hit out because there was a big stack and I got sold into at 7. And then 6.9 was super thin. And so was 6.8. I think there was a gap even at 6.7. There was no, no liquidity there. So... I was happy to get 6.9, uh, even though it was looking really strong. I was just, I was, you know, I shouldn't have been paying attention to the order book as much, I think. I should have just been paying attention to the executed volume. And look, that 7 cents when it got wiped on high volume, I think was my, my trigger point. So look, still happy with the trade, but could have been better. I think it closed at 7 or 7.1 into the auction uh, and ended up just flopping the next day. It just ended up being a complete nothing. So this actually closed really nicely. So if I get rid of the chevrons here and open up the daily chart, you know, it closed on really good volumes. It closed one tick from the high. And nine times out of 10, back in pre-COVID, this rallies again, right? This goes, this gaps up to like 7.4, does a rally, doesn't necessarily have to close at the highs but it does rally right this is this is why i suck at overnight holds i used to be really good at them because it was like really brain dead smooth brain plays right you'd look for a candle that closed at its highs or one you know a tick or two away from its highs on good volumes the next day it would just be a guarantee almost a guaranteed rally the next day almost a guarantee every day of the week between 2016 and 2017 particularly the lithium uh, era in the micro caps though anything with lithium with that close on its highs would guarantee 10 15 percent the next day the next morning at open 
and then rally to 25 30 uh so i'm i'm stuck in the pre-covid era so um i, I learned my lesson lately I, I took a big overnight hit on something that closed out really really good like this on sud and then just like, fucking gap down so many ticks so i haven't actually been taking overnight holds or at least i've been trying to minimize them as much as possible because i haven't figured out the formula lately for what the fuck constitutes a good overnight hold because everything in micro cap and small cap land even though the demand is really good into the afternoon and the volumes kick up the next day the vast majority of stocks just go fucking red <laughs> so you know i i don't quite know what the formula is i guess it's just not the right time of the month uh might have to wait for liquidity to come in more liquidity to come in and the markets to be more alive before i ever touch overnight holds again really uh rdg this one was a big fuck fest i think there was like a thousand fifteen hundred percent increase in commodity in whatever commodity it is that they drill for could have been rare earths or something like that i don't actually recall saw the headline i was like okay cool hop in hop in hop in and scale the fuck out as this thing just absolutely melted uh huge sellers popped up on the sell side and the bids just fucking disappeared i mean the book was thin to begin with but then sellers really just piled in at every level on this thing and look i i mean i didn't put much in terms of volume here i think uh, maybe three and a half k or something because the book was so thin that i was like i'm not going to put on actual size for this thing i'll just try and make a few hundred bucks just for shits and giggles uh it was towards the end of the day and i was like okay cool if make a few hundred bucks why not get some pork rolls out of it uh no nah, ended up costing me a few hundred bucks instead so <laughs> it was really hard to hit out you know uh buying it at five seven five eight i, I might have taken five nine as well i don't recall i just remember the total size was around thirty five hundred bucks uh yeah so couldn't size in on something with a book that small that thin and wow i fuck i paid the price for it um yeah, a few hundred bucks down on that one. Wasn't too impressed with my decision making. That put me on tilt. Ah, PHL, this one. This was classic, classic pre-COVID micro cap boom shit. I loved it. I loved it. Everything about it was just perfect. So this was a partnership, right, between PHL. I think it was about a 15 to 19 mil market cap company from off, just off the top of my head. Doing a partnership with ANZ, right? You've got a blue chip or a large cap company doing a partnership or a strategic investment, strategic partnership, whatever keywords you want to throw in, basically working with a micro cap company. Uh, sorry, was this ZipPay? No, this is ZipPay, not ANZ, my apologies. Uh, so a well-known company, a well-known brand working with a micro cap. Every fucking day of the week, this moves, right? This is classic 2016, 2017 IT, IT boom shit or IT fintech boom shit. So basically just wait for the volumes. I didn't like how it was opening. Um, I think it had a strong negative surplus off the top of my head. Huge selling came in. And if we check the daily chart, again, this is one of those stocks I was talking about. This is the exact same setup that I was talking about is, whoa, we've got a massive sell off. So again, predicting opening price action video is, hey, we're on a massive downswing on the daily chart. Guess what happens when you gap up? There's going to be massive selling and it's going to restrict any pumps in the first opening minutes. In this case, we didn't really have too much to sell off because we gapped up from what, 10, 10 and a half cents to 14 cents? Yeah, it dropped a cent yes, and it grinded, grinded. And I saw that there was a, a failure to sell off because when selling happens, it happens quick. So 14, 14 and a half. Target was uh, 19 and a half initially, had to move it down. I thought it was a 19 and a half or 19. Shit, I can't remember. I, I moved it down, uh, took some out at 17 and a half, and then one guy just market bought everything and took out my other order as well. So really happy with that. If I open the daily chart. Yeah, so this was this was the idea here, is this high volume, 20 cents. I want to get the fuck out before 20 cents. So hence my uh, 19, 19 and a half target. Now that 17 and a half that I ended up taking out was because the book was looking a bit... Uh, uninteresting there was a lot of you know reload selling and stuff like that that was happening there was a lot of sell pressure on its way up and volumes you, you can see, see just eventually topped out you can't sustain that kind of volumes for too long there's going to be a pullback but i was happy taking that trade um every day of the week in i in micro cap land when a, a, a micro cap and i'm talking like you know 10 to 25 mil does a deal or a partnership with a big brand or a blue chip it's gonna move 
right? It's just going to move. That's in my book of rules of how to make the easiest, quickest money of your life is when those partnerships happen because they always move up in, in the immediate term. Um, do I hold them overnight? No, never, never. This is just a story. People buy into the story and then of course it just flops and dies off, right? I'm in it for the spike. I'm in it for the momentum and the volume. I just know that these things rally like this and I'm really happy that I just it just got in because uh, the the selling if you look at spark if you look at the action at 14 cents it looked fucking terrible right the bids weren't really stepping up uh it was looking sh it was al always looked weak at 14 cents but i knew that the price action wasn't necessarily the thing to pay attention to this was catalyst news announcement again micro cap with a massive well-known brand such as zip pay the only way this could have been better is if it was afterpay or an actual proper blue chip like cba or something like that so Really good announcement, really good push. In terms of percentage gain, that's pretty huge, and I was really happy with that. So that's pretty much it. Oh my god, we've done 30 minutes on this uh, on this overview. So guys, I hope you learned something. This is more of a rehash of stuff that I've already done uh, in terms of the tip videos, but actually applying it in real time into my trades. And I guess you guys can see how my old content, my old, old, old content has, has basically um come to fruition so guys if you learned anything uh please do consider hitting that sub button more importantly the like button i'd appreciate that a lot otherwise guys have a good weekend